Hey guys, hope you guys are having a great day so far. I'm very excited to bring you today's video. Apologize in advance for the wind noise as we're moving into fall here. The winds are blowing, blowing the leaves off the trees, but today I've finally decided to do it. I pulled the trigger for my 2014 Silverado. We are going to be um, doing the HMI upgrade, which basically consists of adding Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to it. So it's kind of a, it's a few steps to do this. It's really easy, guys. Um, you're just gonna need basically three parts to do it. And I'm gonna leave you a link to the website that I used. It's very easy to use. Um, everything was right there, laid out for me on how to do it. So today I'm actually gonna show you the install and kind of give you a little demo of what it looks like on my 2014 here. So outside of this installation, something to be very mindful of, guys, is whenever you're, do take your time, do your research on the parts that you need to order. You're gonna need your VIN code, you're gonna need to look up some RPO codes um, on your vehicle to make sure if you've got Bose, if you don't have Bose, premium sound, all that stuff and whatnot. So make sure that you get it right, just do it once, do it right the first time. That way you're not having to send stuff back and whatnot. Um, you can buy HMIs and radio units secondhand, but if, but you need to make sure you're getting the right stuff. I personally just purchased from the website below, got everything brand new. It was a little pricey, but I knew it was gonna be right. It's brand new, it's warranted. Make sure you got your VIN right so you can send that information to them to program in there and make sure, make sure you're getting the right HMI um, for your vehicle. So they lay everything out beautifully on the website. Take your time, do your research before doing this installation. But otherwise, I'm gonna show you how to install it today. So really, I'm gonna, lay this out basically in five steps. We just talked about the first one, doing your research on the parts that you need for your truck. Um, I actually don't even have them yet. UPS is supposed to deliver them today. So that's why I'm, I'm shooting this right now. Haven't even got them. I want to pull everything out. And then when UPS gets here, we'll be able to put everything right back in. Hopefully get it done before it turns dark on us. But uh, that was the first step. Second step is going to be to disconnect your battery. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're just going to come around here. Pop the hood, uh, there we go. And we are gonna come over to the left-hand side, the passenger side, and disconnect the negative battery, battery cable there. By the way, that is a 10 millimeter back there. So, I'm just gonna untighten it. And slide this up and off. And these battery cables are pretty stiff. So one thing you can do, if you want to, you can take the um, the cap that goes over the positive, simply lay it over here like that. Just that way you know this isn't sliding forward and gonna touch anything. That way we're not popping any fuses um, or we're not messing up any HMIs or anything today. So the next part is gonna be to come inside the vehicle. And as you can see, my step didn't come down. We're losing power here. But I'm going to open the bottom glove box, take everything out of there. So we're going to drop this dude down. So I'm going to set you guys down to my feet for just a second. Don't need everybody seeing all my info for insurance and whatnot. So we about got her cleared out. So this is the third step here. We're actually going to take this out. And so this is the third step. Once you've got this cleared out, you've got four T15 bolts. One here, one here, and then there are two more on the bottom. You can see there and there. Take those out and your glove box is gonna fall out. And for those of you who don't know, you may actually, if you're watching this video before you've ordered all the stuff, you may want to order a cabin air filter because this would be a good time to uh, change that out. It's actually behind the glove box as well. But I'm going to undo all four of these bolts and then pull this out of here. Yep, just be sure you open your top glove box and then it'll start to uh, pop out just like that. So I'm going to set this down here. And now what we're going to be looking at, guys, is the HMI. It's this guy right here. You can see there's lots of cables that are tied up and whatnot. So we're gonna need to unplug all of these to slide the HMI out. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but just look at your cables and how they clip in there. Most of them are probably just like little thumb clips that you can grab onto and pull like that one. But just grab all those and unplug them. 
you can see, very quick process for me here. And, oh, it looks like we got one more. Yeah, they were all just little thumb clips. So you simply just push in on the top on all these and pull them all out. You can see, it should be free to pull out now. Okay, so yeah, it came out just as expected. Um, there's no clips or anything on the side. It literally just slides out. It took a little persuasion. I had to pull and twist a little bit to get it to come. But you can see, this is the 2.0 HMI, which this is the old style that came in the um, 2014s and 2015s. What we're going to be getting in the mail is the 2.5. So you can sell this. I mean, I don't know if it needs to be unlocked or anything like that. I'm going to hold on to mine just because I want to keep it. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, whenever the new one comes, we'll just push, put it back in there plug everything back in and it'll be good to go. Um, but until then, we're gonna move on to the fourth step, which is getting the radio out of here. And I've got just a little plastic pry tool and we are going to just work our way around this uh, gray bezel. It's supposed to be just held in by clips, so they should just pry up, pull out. There should be four bolts holding the radio in. I do apologize if this is a little bit clumsy as we go along here. This is the first time I've ever done this, so it's all new to me as well as you guys, I'm sure. Um, but we'll get it figured out. Okay, well, it was just that easy. You can see there's just clips. I started at the bottom, pulled with my hand, and then ran my tool behind it very carefully as not to scratch anything. And it all pulled out. And I'm going to leave the uh, heated and cooled seats. You guys may or may not have those. But you can see it just drapes down here. We've got wire. That's so fine. I believe, I bet these are seven millimeters. So there's one, two, three, and four that you need to get. So let's go get our seven millimeter. We'll see if we're right on the money. Uh, let's see, I kind of, I like the deep wells. So let's grab this guy. Jump back in here, seven millimeter. So make sure you're keeping track of your bolts too, guys. So you know where they go. There we go. All right, so now the whole unit itself should come out of there. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, so you just gotta pull it. It's got two clips on it. And then, voila, there it is. Now, if you want to, you can unplug your radio. There's two clips there, so you do have to give it a little bit of pressure. You can unplug your radio just by unplugging these two. Oh, and there's one down there too for your AC controls. So there's a total of three on the back side. I am simply doing that uh, to get this out of the way. I don't want to scratch my screen up, so I'm going to set it over here out of the way. And then this up here, guys, this is the radio part we need to take out. So just uh, simply start by unclipping these. Looks like maybe all thumb clips again. That's what I call them. I don't know if that's the technical name. That. Ah, that. I apologize. This is tough with just one hand here. And then this last one. Yeah, just like that. And then scoot those down out of the way. We'll pull this module out. There we have it. So you can see this is the old part number, and I'll do a side-by-side -side of these compared to the new ones. So we can set that off out of the way. And then the last step before we reverse the procedure, I should have put all these bolts down in here, is we've got to look in here. And I've actually already got this part, so I ordered it separate. Please don't mind all the junk in here. But I need to unplug my USB because we need to swap this guy out for the newer style one. Um, I, so you'll have to order this separate. And they tell you that on the website, but be mindful of that. You're going to have to order this guy separate. So we'll see if I'm right or wrong here, but I think I can just take this and pry it out of there. Maybe. Yeah, I got one side up. Yeah, I think this will just pry out. And then there's two connectors on the back of it. You can look on your new one and see. And you just simply plug the new one in in its place. So that right there was a royal pain to get out, but I did finally get the module out. You see it's got two plugs on the back side, one there and one there, just a USB, and then I guess your power or something, I don't know. But these new ones will plug back in there, and then the new module just 
slide down just like that. So once all the parts come today, hopefully they come today, we'll be uh, ready to rock. So be back at you guys here shortly. Well, as luck would have it for me, it's actually the next day and it's nighttime, but I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this installation portion for you guys. Um, funny little backstory here. So tore the truck apart yesterday, as you guys just saw. And then I got notification that my UPS package wasn't gonna be there. It was gonna be delayed, which was just fine. I mean, we've got my wife's rig and we've got my other truck here, so no big deal. But then tonight it's Wednesday, so we went out to see my folks and uh, UPS never made it until after five. So here it is around nine o'clock. We've got our box right there that we're gonna tear into, as well as another thing, the other piece that you'll need. But I'll show you guys and we'll turn the light on here best we can so you guys can see the installation procedure. But it's literally just the reverse of what you guys watched here. What you guys are gonna see on my doorstep here, well, and this that we got the other day, I bought this guy on eBay. I'll find a link for you guys down below. But this is the first part you need. It's the little USB receiver. You can see I've actually already tore into it. But definitely buy genuine GM whenever you're buying this. It's going to cost you a little bit of money up front, but definitely worth it. But you can see it's literally for this plug-and-play application. I mean, it literally just plugs right in like the old one does. You can see this one doesn't have SD card, but it has 3.5 millimeter jack. Um, I will leave the part number down there below as well. I forget where it is on here. There it is. So that's the part number, but I'll leave that down for you as well. So that's one part of it, but really the bulk of it is right here. And this is the website. I'll leave it down below, but it's white automotive and media services. These guys made it super easy for me. So shout out to you guys for hooking me up with this genuine GM parts. This is not some uh, hack job that we're doing here. This is legit. Same thing that would come in a newer truck. We're going to do to that guy out there. So it's all the, I mean, this is all OEM really. So Gave him my VIN. I went ahead and ordered the radio and the HD and the HMI from them. That way I know I got brand new ones. They're good to go. They're right for my truck. And they got all the information um, as well as me having the premium Bose audio and GPS. So they lay it all out for you beautifully on the website. And they also let you know that you need to buy this separately. So with that being said, let's open it up. Take a look here. Got my trusty knife. Sorry guys, doing this one-handed and late at night. I would have waited till tomorrow to uh, actually install it, but I'm just too excited, honestly. <laughs> uh, okay, so opening it up, let's see what we've got. On top here, looky there, okay. So that's the first part of the box. Ah, they did a good job boxing this up, I gotta say. That's impressive. Literally just the two components that we need. So this is the this is the radio right here. As you can see, got all our plugs. And then this here should be the HMI. So hey, what do you know it is? And you can see it's the 2.5 HMI programmed for our VIN so that way we don't get any sort of weird errors or hopefully it doesn't so you got to make sure you get the VIN right or I think you can get some weird errors or it might even do some sort of theft lock I don't know I hope that doesn't happen to us hopefully I got all that info right but there's the three components that we need that we're going to install here real quick tonight um doesn't look like any packing slip or anything but we don't need that so I'm going to take all this stuff to the truck and we're going to install. Okay, guys. Here we are out at the truck. Nice and dark. I'm going to throw this guy open here. I'm going to set everything in the seat for now. But, yeah, basically take this guy here. Let's start with it. Plug the two connectors in on the back side, and then we just push that back in. So, as you can see here, it's clipped in, ready to push back in its slot, just like so. Smooth clipped in no problem there so that is good to go now i'm going to take the new radio this guy right here you can see this is the old one which they look pretty freaking close honestly but so don't get those confused make sure you got the new one ready to go in there but uh 
Let's see, let me get a little organized, guys. I apologize. So we're gonna take the radio. I'm gonna climb up in this thing. It's hard without my auto steps popping out. And we're just gonna slide this guy in there, like so. Start plugging everything back in. Make sure you get it all. Clip, clip. Everything's color coded. These trucks really are pretty easy to work on. I'm very impressed. I honestly haven't done much work on this one just because I kept it pretty OEM for the most part, except for uh, minor lift level, really, uh, wheels and tires. But uh, I'm finding that as I'm doing more things to it, it's pretty easy to work on. Uh, which way does this one go? Oh, well, that plugs into the radio head. Okay, I'm messing with the wrong one here. Okay, so I had to pause the video briefly and go back, look at my notes. That's why I like to video some of this stuff. You'll notice I didn't have a white or a brown plug. I don't know what those go to, but that was not on my truck, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, so now, let's take the screen over here. Actually, you know what? Let me throw all my junk back in here. I apologize. This truck's messy. I need to clean it out. We need to take the screen, the three plugs that were on the back, just simply plug it back in. Uh, one was the HVAC control down here, as you can see, and then these two went right here. So I'm going to free my hands up so I can do that. So one thing I'm actually going to do, you can see I've got uh, those clips put in, screens pushed up here. Before I bolt those four bolts back in, the seven millimeter, I'm actually going to leave everything tore apart like this because what... My logic is I want to put the other part in first, the HMI down here. We got the radio in. And before we actually button everything up, I know I've got all the electrical connections right here. I want to turn it on, make sure we're not going to have any issues, and I have to pull this thing out. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to redo, pull all these bolts out and everything. This will just save me time if I have issues. So now, I'm going to uh, jump out of the truck. We're going to locate the new 2.5 HMI. We're gonna slide it up in here, move all these wires out of the way. All right, the HMI is scooted up in there. Everything's all plugged in. And now, like I say, before I throw this up there and button everything up, I wanna test it out, make sure it's gonna work for myself. So uh, we're gonna connect the battery real quick with our 10 millimeter and we're gonna see how she looks. Okay, moment of truth. Let's uh, jump around here, turn on the truck. Okay, we got lights on the dash, that's good. All right. Oh, let's close the door. So far, it's a good start. You can see, it says the hood's open. Okay. Hey, look at that. Cool. We've got weather, Pandora video, text. Woo. All right, guys. This is looking good. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, pair my phone. Look at that. That looks sweet. I'm excited, guys. I'm going to cut here for tonight, and I'm going to come back tomorrow whenever you've got better light. That way you guys can see what I'm doing here. So see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys. So we're back again this morning. I got my fill of playing around with it last night and didn't do much else other than uh, push that trim piece back in and put those four seven millimeter bolts that hold the radio back in. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and put my glove box up there and uh, put all four of the T5 Torx bits in. And then we're pretty much done with this project. Well, just like that, we got it buttoned back up. It was a pretty easy process, as you guys can see here. I will show you here real quickly just the uh, the look of Apple CarPlay, but I'm gonna do a different video, a little more in depth, if you will. But I just mostly wanted to reserve this as a how-to video. Man, can you guys hear those crows over there? It's crazy. Anyways, let's jump over to the truck here. I'm actually, hopefully, this turns out good. I'm on my iPad here. I have had this installed for. Um, probably a month now, honestly. I mean, you can see I've got a different set of junk in my truck and whatnot, but uh, I wanted to just run with it for a while and make sure that it was gonna work like it was supposed to uh, before I just came right out here, 
showed you guys it and, and said, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. I didn't want to lie to you. So I've been testing it out and I got to say, I love it. So I'm going to hop in the truck here, throw my phone in the middle there and uh, show you how it works. So if we hop in here and I turn the key on, you're going to see over here, it says it's looking for device. Hopefully that'll shut up here in a second. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to the home screen so you guys can see everything that I've got there. So, uh, that's the Apple CarPlay. Turn the music down so we don't get copyrighted. Uh, what I'll do real quick though, is I'll take my phone here and you have to use the USB ports inside of here. You can't use the ones over here. So I just keep me a, a cord always plugged in there. So take that. Let's, uh, let's set my phone here and we'll plug it in so you guys can see what happens on the screen there so we'll plug it in lightning cable you should see up here for too long it'll turn to apple carplay perfect and then boom you see it jumped over to apple carplay so now we can listen to some of our tunes if we want to <clears throat> i can go back here and i can look at um Show me my calendar alerts, anything like that. Show me my GPS location. I can even hit it again. It'll pop over to all the different apps that I have, which, which as you can see, it's really cool. I mean, it works It works just like your iPhone screen, and it looks really nice. Um, go back to apps. You can see I've got all these different ones. I can go to my messages, talk to Siri. Namely, this is what I was interested in right here was the uh, Apple CarPlay. Uh, for music and whatnot, but you can see my Wi-Fi signal, uh, all that great stuff. Look at my maps. And then also, if you want to talk to Siri, just push and hold this button. Siri's listening to us. Hmm. I'm afraid I can't do that while you're in the car. Ah, she didn't understand this. <laughs> but anyways, you can see I've got several different applications here. You can play in the settings. Um, going back out, outside of this, if I go to the home screen... You can see we've got all sorts of different things. Um, I haven't really tested out the video because I, I don't really watch anything in this vehicle. Um, we've got weather. We've got uh, our audio looks quite a bit different. Um, if we jump back over to the radio, you can see we've got all this different stuff. HD messages up here, which leads us right back to uh, <clears throat> CarPlay. But I got to say, I don't know what it is. If there was something messed up with my old HMI, out where I live, I have pretty bad um, cellular service, internet, everything. It's just part of being in a rural area. And my radio reception has always sucked. It is 10 times better with this new HMI. I don't know if there's any bearing on that um, with replacing the HMI or what it is. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it right here, guys. Um, I'm not going to go into great depth on this because... I can do a completely separate video. In fact, guys, if you want a separate video on kind of CarPlay in the truck, let me know and I'll, I'll show you around it more so you guys can see it. But uh, I think that's going to be it for today. Install and just a brief look at this because I didn't find a lot of videos that actually showed what CarPlay looked like once it's actually installed in the truck. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely leave a like. If you're new to the channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. We've got lots of great, we've got lots of great content here and, uh, I admit, guys, I've been a little lazy on rolling out the content, but I have shot three or four videos since making this video right here that I just haven't um, edited and whatnot. But we've got some great content. We got some how tos on the uh, 2014 Forerunner over there, and we've got some new stuff coming for the 2004 Duramax, too. So I hope you guys are excited as I am. All right, guys, until the next video, take care.